Hello and welcome back to Exoplanets 101. So today we're talking about another detection method and this is actually going to be the last detection method that we talk about. And this one is called astrometry. So like most of the other methods that we talked about, astrometry involves looking at the star rather than trying to look directly at a planet because stars are easier to observe. <laughs> if you'll recall, for the radial velocity method, we looked at a star's Doppler shift to determine its radial velocity and therefore its mutual orbit with the planet, and the radial velocity was the, um, the velocity along the line of sight. Now we're doing a similar thing in astrometry, except instead of using the radial velocity and the Doppler effect, we're going to be using the star's proper motion, and that is its two-dimensional motion on the sky. Now this might sound kind of simple, but it's actually complicated because a star has lots of reasons that it changes its apparent position on the sky, so we have to remove those reasons first. So the first is parallax. So as the Earth travels around the Sun, the relative location of stars in the sky appear to change depending on their distance from us. So this is the same concept as holding, you know, your thumb out and it appears to change location if you look at different eyes. So this eye would be the Earth on one side of the Sun, and this eye would be the Earth on the other side of the Sun. So we have to remove that effect. Then stars have a relative motion relative to us. All of the stars in the Milky Way are orbiting through the galaxy, and so we, they all have different relative velocities, and so we have to subtract the relative velocity and the parallax away from the star's proper motion. And then what is left over is its motion due to a planet. And that bit of motion that's left over is very small compared to these other effects. And so we really need to get a very high resolution and very good data in order to do this kind of uh, detection. So I said that the proper motion is the motion in the sky plane, and that is the plane that's perpendicular to the radial velocity. So astrometry is a really complementary method to radial velocity because it gets us the other two dimensions of motion that radial velocity misses out on. But if you'll recall, radial velocity had a degeneracy that is um, an effect that could be caused either by the mass of the orbiting planet or by the inclination of the orbit, that is the orientation of the orbit that we're seeing. Now you might think that there's a similar degeneracy with astrometry because again, we're only seeing a projection of the orbit, not the entire orbit. But this time we're seeing the projection in two dimensions. And that actually means that we can differentiate between projection effects and the ellipticity of the orbit. Um, and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail in a future video, but we can actually basically get a full 3D orbit from astrometry, which is really cool. Also, for a lot of these stars that we can observe the proper motion, we can also get a radial velocity, and that will give us a really full picture of the system and its dynamics. Now this method, like direct imaging, seems very straightforward, and in fact it was one of the first methods that was proposed to detect extrasolar planets. However, like I said, these motions are very small, and so we did not have the required resolution to do this until just recently. And in fact, the first time we detected an exoplanet using astrometry was not until 2002. And this was the planet Gliese 786b. However, this planet was already known to exist because of radial velocities. And in fact, we have not yet discovered a planet via astrometry. We've detected that some, but we already knew that they were there. So we haven't discovered any new planets using astrometry. However, we expect this to change pretty soon because of the Gaia mission. So Gaia is an ESA mission, the European Space Agency, and its mission is to observe billions of stars in the Milky Way. And observing these stars, it's going to get uh, very detailed measurements of their parallaxes, their motions, their velocities, their positions, all of this kind of information that we will need to do astrometry to detect planets. Now the Gaia mission was launched in 2013, but it won't be finished until 2022. Now some data has already been released, and in fact the early data release 3 was just released a couple weeks ago. However, none of the data releases so far have contained the information that we would need to detect exoplanets. And that data isn't expected to be released until the mission is completed in 2022. However, once that happens, they are projecting that they, they are going to detect thousands of exoplanets. So Gaia, if it, <laughs> if it lives up to the hype, which we hope it will, um, is going to really open up a whole new window um, onto exoplanet systems and really provide us with a bunch of new planets that it's going to be so exciting to do um, so much science on. I, honestly, I think it's going to be great. So like I said, of the currently confirmed known exoplanets, 0% of them were discovered using uh, astrometry, but we do expect that to change a lot in the next few years, so keep an eye out for what uh, Gaia is going to do to kind of revolutionize the astrometric detection of exoplanets but hopefully you learned a little bit about how we use the motion of stars in the sky to detect if they have planets around them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come back soon. Bye!